Hey, welcome back to Foggy Bruin, friends. Uh, this is part two of how to explore caves and survive. In this part, we continue exploring the caves and we learn how to get out if you do get lost. Well, let's go. When I first started exploring caves, I used to leave torches like all over the place, and the benefit of that is it lit everything up, but the negative side of that is it doesn't really give you any indication of uh, which direction you need to go to get to safety, or it can be very confusing if you've already been in that area and you're heading to another area, or were you just in that area because everything starts looking the same. Uh, that's why it's really important uh, when you wind up leaving torches all over the place to do them with um, uh, markers so you know which direction to go. You see I've left torches all over the place, okay fine, it's really bright in here, but it doesn't really tell you, oh, uh, this is the direction I need to go to get out. It just makes it that uh, it's all lit up and you can't really tell anything further. So I suggest that you place torches strategically and use markers that tell you which direction to go to get out and which direction it is that uh, is the safest way or the easiest route to the surface. When I'm exploring and I wind up finding a dead end like this, I like to close it in so I don't waste time exploring there again. Uh, that was just a small area, but sometimes you'll wind up going down a long tunnel that doesn't actually lead to anything. And so I close it off so I don't bother wasting time going down there again. I'll just collect some of these torches that I threw around just so that everybody could see my example of uh, putting torches all over the place and how it doesn't really help you uh, know which way you're going. I'm just going to jump ahead here. I had already explored inside of here and it turned out to just be a dead end so I'm just going to close it in uh, like this and then we'll move on to exploring someplace else. See, here's a good example of how uh, corridors and tunnels underground can all look the same. It can be really easy to get confused, different levels, which way is the way to get out, and if you just throw torches everywhere, then how are you to know what areas you've been in and which areas uh, are leading the way out? Uh, so that's why it's good to use the markers, because they tell you which direction to go.
here's some more iron. If you want to go mining for diamonds or gold, you have to get really deep, so you're going to have to go close to bedrock, because diamonds uh, usually only occur uh, very, very deep underground. I'm going to do a, a jump ahead here because for the next little bit I just did some more exploring, placing markers, and did a bit of mining. And I don't think you'll find that all that interesting, so we'll just jump ahead to the next part. Like we mentioned earlier, as you can see here, if you don't wind up uh, putting up markers to show you what direction is the way out, it's very easy to get lost since all the tunnels seem to look the same, and if you haven't changed anything about them, uh, they all just sort of blend together and you're not sure which direction you're supposed to head. But if you've got the markers put in place, uh, then you can use them to tell you which direction to head to get out. If we follow our markers in the direction that they're pointing, it's easy for me to see that I need to go this direction and turn around and go up here. And then I go up the stairs, and here's another marker, and it's there you go, and that's the way out. This is a pretty cool looking cave structure. Let's see what's up here. Whoa, that was close. Uh, there can be some very deep holes in caves, and if you step into them, you are going to die if there's not water at the bottom of them. So you've got to be careful when you're exploring. Ah! So much for that pickaxe. See, here is the benefit of having a crafting table with you and sticks. Uh, you can make yourself more tools every time you break them, and then you'll never get stuck underground because you can always dig your way out. Sounds like there's a zombie around here. Let's get ready for him. Oh, there he is. Ha! Yeah. Got him. See, this is one of those spots which was a good place to fight him because I had a strategic advantage. He had to jump on top of there before he could get me, so it was easy for me to kill him. Oh, there's another zombie way in the distance. put torches up around deep holes like this just so that when I come around to them again I know where they are so I don't get surprised by them and fall down the hole. And if you want to be close to the edge or you are close to the edge, if you crouch then you can't fall off unless you're hit by something and that way you don't have to worry about falling down the hole. Oh, looks like 
looks like we ran out of torches. All right, so let's make some more. Get out the crafting table and put it down. And then since we have wood and sticks and we found coal, we can make endless amounts of torches so we'll never get lost in the dark. Okay, so let's say that you are uh, injured or you are really deep in the cave and you don't know how to get out or uh, you decide it's just time to uh, get out of the cave and you don't want to go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, as long as you've got a crafting table and tools, you can dig your way out no matter where you are. Uh, if you're hurt and say you're running out of food, you can also close in the tunnel behind you so nobody can sneak up behind you and just dig your way to the surface. And there you go, we're back on the surface, and look at that, it's night time. Time to get home. I like to leave torches around uh, openings to tunnels like this, so it's easy for me to find them again later. Oh, and look at that, there is my uh, tower to the sky in the distance, which is right beside my home, so I can find it from pretty much anywhere. Look at that, there is an Enderman standing over there. Uh, normally I wouldn't be worried about an Enderman since I've got my enchanted armor and my enchanted sword, but since at the moment I am wearing leather armor and uh, only have stone weapons, it would not be a good idea for me to take him on. Oh, and there is a creeper, so we gotta get away from him too. Give him a whack and let him explode. Bye-bye, creeper. Boom. Nice big hole. Since I'm just on my way home now, I am just going to jump ahead and skip the trip back home. And there is my lovely home. Oh, and a skeleton. Let's get him. Ha! Ah, we got the jump on him, so he didn't have a chance to shoot us with too many arrows, and he's dead. But he did get me once there. Actually, he got me a couple of times, so we're going to need to eat some food. Yum, 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 yum. Ah, that's better. Now, let's head for home. Uh, this is my lake, and there is my underwater viewing area. And there, you see the jack-o'-lantern under there? If you place a jack-o'-lantern or any object in water where it's uh, flowing downward, it can create a vacuum underneath it, a space, and then if you go in there, you can actually stand underneath it and breathe underwater. And this is one way that you can eat bread underwater and not have it get soaking wet. Well, that's going to be about the end of the video for tonight, and uh, if you follow those techniques, you should be able to explore underground uh, without dying, and hopefully without getting lost. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like the video, and please subscribe. See you again soon. Bye!